Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. This week, we have all the drama and excitement from Glasgow as we wrap up the Total BWF World Championships 2017. And India's latest men's singles ace, Sai Praneeth, talks to us about his recent change in fortunes in the solo event. The fastest racket sport in the world took centre stage in Scotland when Glasgow welcomed Babington's finest to its vibrant city for the Total BWF World Championships 2017. This is the second time the city has hosted the prestigious championships, having staged the major individual tournament before in 1997. And Badminton Scotland was delighted to have the privilege again after two decades. I can't believe that uh, we are staging what is going to be really our fourth World Championships. We uh, were honoured to be entrusted with the World Individual and Team Championships in 1997 and that was followed on by the Team Championships again in 2007 and now we've got the BWS Crown Jewel event World Individual Championships in Glasgow and I am so delighted. We want to ensure that everyone that visits this event Everyone that's involved in this event will leave Glasgow with memories that will be with them for years to come. In terms of uh, the Scottish badminton players as a whole, everyone's just really looking forward to getting on court in front of a home crowd again because it's so special, especially Glasgow crowds. They're just incredible. And uh, like I say, my friends have been uh, loving taking selfies with all the, the posters that are around town. Um, they're literally everywhere um, and it's, it's going to be really good. Players, officials and guests got a first taste of Scotland's renowned vibrant culture, rich historical heritage and hospitality at the opening gala dinner, held at the world-famous Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. The iconic Glasgow landmark provided the perfect setting to usher in the grand badminton event. I, I think this, this World Championships this year is, is somewhat special. Uh, to what we've seen in previous years. I mean, it's straight after the Olympic Games in Rio. Um, this to tell BWF World Championships is kind of like the, the next big thing. So these championships have a special meaning, I think, for a lot of players where they really want to go out and prove themselves and, and actually go for these championships. And, and there has been a lead up time where everybody has been preparing themselves. So uh, there's a very special atmosphere here uh, during this week and I'm sure we'll see some really top performances. With the festivities completed, it was time to get down to business and the attention moved to the courts. And there was plenty of drama and nail-biting moments from the opening round. In what could be the biggest upset of the round, and possibly the tournament, top men's singles contender Lee Chong Wei fell at the first hurdle to Frenchman Brie Levede. Bryce Levede's quick serve, serving at match point. And he's done it! Levered on his knees. What has this man just done? What a performance. It's okay. I just try. And uh, today I, I, I think I don't play so well. And uh, I think uh, Greg didn't play so well today. I just uh, try. And uh, second game also he lead a lot. I just try back. And uh, third game also the... Today is very lucky. There were also surprise early exits in men's doubles. Top seeds Li Jinhui and Liu Yuchen of China and Malaysia's Olympic silver medalist Go Shem and Tanwi Kyung were sent packing in round two of the competition. In women's singles, top seed Akane Yamaguchi crashed out in the last 16. Less than a year after winning the world junior title, China's Chen Yufei clinically finished the Japanese player in straight games. I have played Chen three times before this match and won all of them. But today, she showed her fighting spirit which gave me some extra pressure. I couldn't perform the way I normally do. I lost my aggressiveness and backed off. Carolina Marin's reign as the world champion came to an end in the quarterfinals. 
Winner of the last two world titles and the Rio Olympics gold, the Spanish ace went down to Japan's Nozomi Okuhara, who outlasted the Spaniard in three games. Yeah, I think it was a bit of match. I just uh, give my, my best, but uh, it wasn't enough. I think I have to, to learn for today. I just uh, need to control myself and uh, don't make an easy mistake against this uh, kind of opponent. This year's most successful mixed doubles duo, Lu Kai and Huang Yacheng, also crashed out in the quarters. The number two sees losing to Hong Kong's Li Chunhei and Chao Hui Hua in three games. Fancied Indonesian duo Marcus Finaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamoljo also fell at the quarterfinal stage. The number three seeds were defeated in a tense three game affair by China's Chai Biao and Hong Wei. Oh, it's a calm attack from Chinese. Defense standing up and up and off. Chai Biao with the forehand into Gideon's body. The Chinese have done it. Chen Long's title defense was halted by an imposing Victor Axelsson in the semi finals. The Rio Olympic gold medal winner was outplayed by the young Dane, who won comfortably in straight sets. He's done it. He has destroyed the two time defending champion. This is our second meeting after the Rio Olympic Games. He is as good as us Chinese players right now. If we can't perform, we would lose to him. He played better than me today. Things also didn't go too brightly for women's doubles Olympic champions Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi in the last four. The Japanese pair could not respond to the confident and dominant display of China's Chen Qingchen and Jia Yifan. Chen Chen and Jia Yifan, the two-time world junior champions, have a chance at gold tomorrow in the world championship final. After the break, we stay in Glasgow as we bring you all the pulsating action from finals day of the Total BWF World Championships 2017. After six days of high adrenaline badminton action, the finals day produced one of the most exciting finals witnessed at the World Championships. Women's doubles kicked off proceedings in Glasgow, and China's Cheng Chinchen and Jia Yi Fan faced Japan's rising stars Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota. It was close in the opener, but the firepower of the Chinese duo saw them pull ahead to grab the first game 21-18. The second game began in the same manner with Chen and Jia dictating play, but Fukushima and Hirota caught up midway and with smart counter-attacking snatched the second to level the scores. The Chinese pair came out strongly in the decider and chalked up a big lead. Although the Japanese fought back, the gap was too large. The Dunnies! History is made! The first time that a pair who have won the World Junior Championship go on to win the World Senior title. Our hard work finally paid off today. The medal is due to the hard work of my teammate and our coaches. The third game was extremely difficult when they were trying to catch up, but I'm glad we made it. This is the first step to bigger success. I have a clear goal that I am working towards. My ultimate goal is to win the goal at the Tokyo Olympics to enjoy the Chinese national anthem after the final. In the women's singles final, India's Olympic silver medalists faced Nozomi Okuhara of Japan. 
and this match produced one of the all-time great contests. Okuhara set the tempo for much of the opening game, although the Indian shuttler took an early lead. Reeling off seven straight points helped the Japanese eventually take the first game. The second was close all the way, with Pusala saving three match points to level at 2020, and she grabbed the second game after an incredible 73 shot rally. It's one game all. Down, but not out. The final game was a test of endurance and willpower, with both players pushed to their limits. The scores were neck and neck until 20 all. After 110 minutes of gold standard badminton from the two players, Okuhara emerged victorious in an epic women's singles final and becomes Japan's first ever women's singles world champion. Before the tournament, I didn't expect to become the world champion. I just wanted to play my best, but I've always had faith in myself. And the people around me have always supported me and they kept telling me that I can win it. Their support had really given me the strength. I think overall it was a very good match and uh, it was anybody's game. So a bit upset uh, because, uh, you know, it was 20 all and then um, I think uh, I, uh, I was a bit nervous because, you know, it, I, I have no words because uh, it's a bit upsetting, you know, uh, it was anybody's match and uh, I think even she also played exceptionally well. Uh, I would like to congratulate her and uh, it was a long match. Each point was very important from both the sides. The men's singles final saw China's Lin Dan contesting for his sixth world title, while Victor Axelsson of Denmark aims to become his nation's first to win the men's crown since Peter Rasmussen 20 years ago. The opener was closely fought, and at 2019, Lin Dan sniffed a first game win. But the Chinese seemed to have lost focus, and after hitting a couple of wayward shots, Axelsson was a game up. The second was all Axelsson, as the errors from Lin Dan mounted. Five's time world champion just couldn't find a response against the solid Dane. And after 54 minutes, the men's singles crown belonged to Denmark. He's done it! Victor Axelsson becomes world champion. Defeating five-time former champion Lin Dan in the final in two straight games. It means the world to me. This is the biggest dream of one of the biggest dreams of mine coming true. So I'm just so happy, relieved, and just everything positive you actually can feel. I'm feeling right now. I think Axelsson played really well for this tournament. He also played some extremely good badminton during his matches. I think he will be under more pressure now as the world champion. There will be more younger players who will look to challenge him in the future. The men's doubles final was next, and Indonesia's Mohamed Ahsan, who has won it twice with Hendra Setiawan, was looking for a hat-trick of world championship titles with new partner Rian Agung Saputro. His ambitions, though, were thwarted by China's Jiang Nan and Liu Cheng. The Chinese pair started strongly and comfortably won the opening game. Although the Indonesian pair tried to stay close in the second, Zhang and Liu always had the upper hand, and after 37 minutes, it was all over. And that's gone wide. And Zhang Nan wins his fourth gold medal at World Championships, his first in men's doubles. Bringing down the curtains on the Total BWF World Championships 2017 was the mixed doubles final. Indonesia's Tontowi Ahmad and Liliana Natsir were going for their second World Championship title against China's hot young duo and top seeds Jung Se Wei and Cheng Chin Chin. 
Things didn't start well for the Indonesians as Jung and Chun very comfortably won the opening game. But their experience kicked into gear in the second and Tontowi and Liliana showed why they were Olympic winners. The Chinese couldn't handle the change in tactics and the Indonesian pair grabbed the second game comfortably. It was much the same in the decider, with the Indonesian duo dictating play and the Chinese just couldn't find a way through. They've done it! The Olympic champions regain their world title. Losing the first game was not the end of the tournament. We worked hard, talked to each other on court, and the coach helped us to work on the strategies throughout the match. We started to enjoy our play in the third game. We were confident we would be able to make it. The gold medal is for my child and everyone back in Indonesia. Our people are celebrating the Independence Day this month. It is for them. It is for the badminton lovers back home. With high drama, adrenaline and badminton of the highest quality to the very end, the Total BWF World Championships 2017 will be remembered as one of the most exciting for many years. After the break, we put the spotlight on Sai Panit, India's latest men's singles hotshot. Get connected with us on social media, follow us on Twitter and Facebook and tell us what you think of the latest news, or perhaps you just want to leave an encouraging post for your favorite player on Facebook. If you've got any comments or photos, share them with us on these social media platforms. As Olympic medal winners, Indian women's single stars Saina Newal and Pusala V. Sindhu have rightfully become their nation's sporting icons. Lately, their male counterparts have also come into their own. On the BWF's men's singles world rankings, India impressively boasts four players in the top 20. Sai Pranith is part of this exciting band of shuttlers. A World Super Series winner at the OUE Singapore Open earlier this year, the 25-year-old is India's latest hotshot. Before the tournament, I am not expected, but as the tournament going on and I reached uh, pre-quarter quarter and then after winning the quarter, then uh, I have thought that now I have got a chance to win the tournament. And yeah, the, after, yeah, so once I win my quarter final, I, I could see all the semi-finalists and uh, I know I have a chance now to at least reach the final. Badminton Unlimited recently caught up with the world number 19 at his training headquarters in Hyderabad and we found out how the Indian navigated himself to the big time. As with Saina and Sindhu, Sai Panit is a winning product hailing from the famed Gobichand Badminton Academy. But his path to success didn't come easy. A bronze medal winner at the 2010 BWF World Junior Championships, many expected Sai Panit to make an impact when he stepped up to the senior circuit. However, fitness struggles saw a difficult transition. Initially, when I crossed the junior, uh, I, have I have the first person who, I mean, like, started beating or winning good matches in the international level, and uh, all the people were thinking that time that I could be, I mean, I could win this tournament that time itself, but it doesn't happen. Uh, I've got injured, and there were many ups and downs. So I think. Uh, once I we won the tournaments and so everybody I think at last at least uh, he started winning now. Sai Pranith went on to win several international challenge titles and managed a Grand Prix crown at last year's Canada Open. 
While he was content with the progress, Saipanit found his erratic physical condition getting in the way of bigger accomplishments. This year, in a bid to work on building his fitness, he took a big decision to sit out the prestigious All England Championships. From the last one year, if you take one, one and a half year, the, I mean, I'm playing good. I was beating good players, but I couldn't win a tournament. Like, uh, I mean, I couldn't win, uh, carry forward that win throughout the tournament. And it was always been in mind that uh, I am playing good, but still not winning. And uh, now this year also in Syed Modi, I have played finals. And later then I have got injured. And later I did training for two months. Feb and March before India, Malaysia and Singapore and I was skipped, I've skipped all England and Swiss. I think during that period, the two months training which I did made my fitness improve and I could feel that in the court when I'm playing. It proved to be a masterstroke. Although he bowed out early in India and Malaysia, Saipanit made the breakthrough in Singapore a first ever appearance at a BWF World Super Series final and up against compatriot Kidambi Srikanth. Saipanith was never going to let his golden opportunity slip away. I was very happy uh, that I am uh, playing Super Series for the first time finals and uh, but at the same time I am playing with Srikanth so I mean it's a mix this thing because uh, all, it's always uh, tough playing with the player who you know or who we practice every day. Initially, I started slow. I was not expecting Srikanth to start so fast. Like, yeah, so it was, uh, I took a bit time to adjust the conditions and it's a final also and I was playing for the first time and yeah, once I got my rhythm in the second game and yeah, once I won the second game, I got a bit confident about the third game. It's match point opportunities for Sai Pranis Bamidi Party. He's done it. A maiden Super Series title for Sai Pranis in his first ever Super Series tournament final. I have lost many matches. Uh, leading all the way like 1914 or 2017, 2016. So I have till I just thought of till the match and you don't think that you won the match and and the last point also I have never uh, took it light or any I didn't relax anything. I just thought whenever I get chance I just want to finish the rally and finish the take the game. In a rich vein of form and fitness, Saipani took his winning game to Bangkok next and the Singapore Open champion topped the podium at the SCG Thailand Open, this time beating Indonesia's Jonathan Christie to the crown. Delighted with his marvellous run of performances, Sai Pranith credits tweaking expectations as key to his recent upturn of fortunes on court. The way I am playing now is better, I mean, I am playing good, so if I lose one two tournaments, also I'm sure that I'll perform uh, consistently throughout the other tournaments. So it's always uh, it's always difficult to win in each and every tournament. So uh, the, I'm not feeling any pressure, but yeah, when it comes to the match, I don't think all about this. So just play a match and win or lose is just give 100 percent. And with renowned Indonesian coach Mulyo Handoyo spearheading the training of India's top flight singles players, Saipanit looks ahead with great optimism. Saipanit is a player who is skillful in his techniques. I'm happy that he has been able to find success in several tournaments, especially in Singapore and Thailand. But I also hope that he can achieve more and keep training hard. That is what I hope from Sai, so that he can continue to compete at a very good level and challenge the top players in the world. I've always been uh, working on my fitness and strength. So I think now I have already worked on my fitness and now I'm uh, good at that. But yeah, I am working on my strength. So hopefully it should be fine in coming days.
The emergence of Sai Pranith is testament to the rise of India in the elite scene. And as the nation continues to plot its way to bigger ambitions, there's no doubt their latest ace will be doing his part. Let's take a look at the tournaments coming up in the next few weeks in our Badminton Unlimited calendar. Next week, Bulgaria's top women's singles player Linda Zetchiri gives us an insight to her ambitions and the challenges she faced to play the sport she loves. See you next week.